We've talked about newspapers, entertainment, and books as exemplars of media in the new world of the internet. What about other areas? What about magazines? A few years ago, I was asked to speak to a magazine convention, and when the organizer talked to me, he said, Jeff, are you going to say that magazines are doomed? And if you are, could you not come? So I thought about it, and I thought, no, there's no reason magazines should be doomed. Quite to the contrary. Magazines really stood in the best position, I think, in the whole internet revolution because they already are communities of shared interest. A great editor sits at the center and picks good stuff, interesting stuff, and the people who write it. And then around that are all the rest of us who like that stuff. The challenge for a magazine is find ways to put all those people together and let them talk and communicate in new ways. There are already communities. You know, the New Yorker is a community. Fast Company is a community that has a strong community online. Specialist magazines like Dwell are very much about shared interests. And they're beautiful beasts. I want to look through a magazine like this, and yes, I want to hold it, and print is wonderful. But print isn't a necessity for all these magazines. And the more general you are, the more doomed you are. I got a recent issue of Time magazine, and it's so thin I could use it to cut cheese. What happens to a general interest magazine like this? I think they can't survive because they're too expensive to put out. And their value isn't that great. Being a generalist in the internet doesn't work. Being a specialist does work. Now, there have been rumors lately about the magazine that I started, Entertainment Weekly, and that it might go purely online. And that should bother me. It should give me a pang if something that I created would go out of print. But I've often said, and I say in the book, that if Entertainment Weekly started today, I wouldn't start it as a magazine. I'd start it as something online. And it wouldn't just be critics talking one way to the audience. It would have to be a system to find ways that the audience can share their own taste with each other. So if EW goes online only, that's probably a good thing because it's a way that it advances to the next generation. The Christian Science Monitor, which was kind of like a magazine, recently went to only one day a week in print and the rest online. And I celebrated that. Some people got mad at me for that. But what it said to me was that the Christian Science Monitor, which is an amazing brand, was able to carry itself into the next generation. And because it got rid of the cost of print, it's able to hold on to its journalists. And so the Christian Science Monitor lives on. The Internet provides an opportunity for magazines to think like communities and to find a new life, not to die an old one.